What is up guys? Welcome back. Today we are going over the replay for uh, our NPL match against uh, Aberforth and uh, the Brisbane Brulooms. We are using of course Rob's team from the NPL, the Austin Toros. And uh, my opponent had a pretty threatening team. I didn't make a team builder or anything, but uh, some really annoying walls, uh, that most of which did not come, which I was kind of surprised. Uh, but he did bring the Cresselia. He brought uh, a Mega Deancey, a Sneasel, which was a little bit of a problem to my team. A uh, Cloyster, which I had to be extremely careful with because if it got up a Shell Smash, uh, I was in trouble. Victini was just very, very hard for me to switch in, especially with the set he brought, as you guys will see. Uh, and Empoleon actually wasn't that hard to kill, so that was nice. Um, so, basically I had to upload this video, guys, if you're wondering, uh, because Rob shouted uh, this video out even before it was made. Uh, on one of his videos, so kind of like putting a little bit of pressure on me, but that's okay. Uh, guys, go check out his channel, please. It'll be in the uh, description down below. He's actually thinking of starting a brand new channel, so you might want to be around for when he announces that. Uh, I'm expecting very big things from that new channel, so uh, definitely give him a, uh, a subscription, a couple of likes on some videos, go check him out. But uh, yeah, so this is uh, the game that we had to play for him this week. Um, a lot of pressure, because I didn't want to lose him any more games. He was already 1-3. So, uh, going into this, uh, not feeling too good. I didn't prep too heavily. I didn't have a lot of time, uh, but I felt like my prep was pretty decent. Uh, we're Mega Scizor as well. Uh, standard Defensive Scizor with a little more, uh, I believe, Special Defense, or Defense EVs, actually. I, sw I swapped the Defense and the Special de uh, Defense because I wanted to take hits from the Cloister a little bit better, as well as a couple of other things on his team, such as the Deancey. Uh, but basically, uh, we have a... Um, a what is it? Max Spadef, uh, Needle Queen, a Dragon Dancing um, Latios as well as a uh, Life Orb. No, it's Expert Belt Greninja with U-Turn, Dark Pulse, uh, Ice Beam for uh, Chestnut that he could have potentially brought and uh, Scald. And then we have a fully physically defensive Arcanine with Iron Head for the Deancey, as well as a fully physically defensive Seismitoad, uh, which took on a couple of things on his team pretty well, such as the Empoleon. Uh, the Cloister uh, couldn't knock me out. Its, its stab and its other form of skill link uh, couldn't really touch me. So that's why I brought Seismitoad. So let's get right into this. Uh, I've already uh, wasted enough time here explaining the team, but uh, my opponent chooses to lead off with Empoleon. I'm just going to switch sides really quickly so you guys can see this from my perspective. But my opponent leads off with Empoleon. I led with Arcanine because it matched up pretty well against the uh, vast majority of my opponent's team. Uh, but I'm going to pause it right here. You guys see I go for Earthquake because I am physically offensive and we do a lot of damage to this Empoleon. I was fearing an Ice Beam at this point. I had to switch out of Arcanine because it wasn't a very good matchup. So I went into Latios to potentially take a Scald. My opponent ended up going for Stealth Rocks, which is perfectly fine. I was Defog on Scizor if I needed to later. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I didn't have any hazard removal on this team. That's right. I decided to swap out Defog for Roost, which you guys will see will come into play. But he goes into Apollyon. Normally, uh, well, I go into Latios. Normally, I wouldn't be able to touch this thing, but because we were physical, uh, I decided to stay in. Earthquake does a lot of damage. Play back from here. As he goes for a Flash Cannon, I was expecting the Ice Beam. He didn't have it. We heal up to 58, and this is actually quite clutch. I go for the Dragon Claw. We're not Life Orb or anything, but we were able to take out the, the Empoleon. I go up to 64, and he goes into Sneasel, and I'm just going to pause it right here, guys. As you can see, he goes for Pursuit, and I predicted him to Pursuit because uh, I had pretty good switch-ins to knockoffs in Pokemon like uh, Arcanine and Scizor. So the only real play that he could go for here was Pursuit. Now, I didn't actually calc this, but I had a pretty good feeling that Sneasel could not take me out with a Pursuit here if I stayed in. So I decided to stay in, and as you guys will see, Latios lives on 2% and is able to get off a huge Dragon Claw on the Sneasel, bringing it down to 20, forcing him to go for the knockoff on the following turn knocking us out and bringing himself down to 10%. Now, I go into Mega Scizor here just to get off the Mega Evolution and to pressure this thing. He stays in to take the Bullet Punch. We are able to knock this thing out. I considered going for a U-turn, but I felt like it wasn't safe. He goes into Victini here, and I go into Arcanine thinking that I can wall this thing. He goes for a Flame Charge, and I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. There's no real physical move that he can hit me with, but I can't hit this thing back because I have no coverage for it. And he goes for a Psychic, showing that he's actually specially offensive. Now, at this point, I don't need Arcanine for anything else. So I'm just gonna let it go down here to a blue flare and the play on the following turn was quite curious because I brought in Needle Queen 
Uh, actually forgetting that this thing is a psychic type and had psychic, we are max spidef, so I can take any hit it wants to go for, and I can get off a very big earth power on, on anything. I'm also leftovers, which is, in retrospect is really stupid because I should have been black sludge, if anything, uh, but it's fine, it doesn't matter, they're basically the same item in this game, he didn't have trick or anything, so it's okay. Um... He, his switch, obviously, here to an Earth Power is into Cresselia. Uh, he thought here that I was bluffing, uh, not that I was bluffing, but that I had potentially the Psychic Reducing Berry. I'm not sure of the name right now, off the top of my head, but my opponent was pretty convinced that I had it. So he pulls a switch into the Cresselia to be able to take the Earth Power. Now, this is a very crucial turn because I decided to pack Toxic Spikes on Needle Queen because I knew it would do a lot to his team, and I go for them right here as he brings in the Deancey. Now, again, we're specially defensive, so we can take this Earth Power, but he actually chooses to go for Substitute, so I knock out the sub, and what's funny is that not having the Life Orb might have allowed his uh, Deancey to live this Earth Power if he hadn't subbed. However, the fact that he subbed allowed me to take him out. Now he goes in a Cloister. I do not have a switch to this thing other than the Seismitoad, but I don't want to risk him like maybe going for Toxic or having something weird. Now I'm going to go into Seismitoad because I do wall this thing once again. He chooses to go into Cresselia. I'm going to go for Stealth Rocks, and I have Toxic on my Seismitoad as well, so I can Toxic this Cresselia. But he chooses to switch into Victini, which is a very good play as I go for Toxic. Now I know he has the Energy Ball, and he's just going to go for it here, but I can't switch anything in. I can't risk it. Uh, definitely not Greninja, obviously. But knowing that this thing is not Scarf, now I can go into Greninja and nothing switches in. So I can just fire off a Dark Pulse, take out this Victini. Biggest threat to Scizor is gone. Here, I thought that he was potentially a Scarfed, um, a, uh, Scarfed Cloister, and then he would be able to knock me out with a Skill Link Rock Blast, so I couldn't really chance it. As you see, he, sa as he says GG, so I'm thinking... Maybe he's trying to bluff the fact that he's not Scarfed and he's just going to go for a Rock Blast here to get off a lot of damage. So I can't really risk that. I can't lose Greninja right now because if anything happens to Scizor, like for example if he's HP Fire on his Cresselia, I need at least the chance to be able to flinch it down. But as you guys will see here, my opponent decides to go for a Shell Smash. And I was very terrified at this point because while I did not have the normal Spadef investment that Scizor has, I still had enough to take a plus two Surf from this range, and I knew that after the poison damage, that I would be able to two hit KO him with a bullet punch. So I was really glad that I got up that toxic spike earlier in the game. Now I just needed to pray for no crit. So he goes for the Surf, as you guys will see he is also White Herb, so he doesn't take the defense drop. I go for bullet punch, leave him in range for another one after poison, and we live on 6% from the Surf, which was pretty clutch from Scizor. Uh, that pretty much never takes us out, even if he's max uh, HP modest. Uh, here I expected him to attack me, but he didn't, and he goes for a Calm Mind. Uh, as you guys can see, I say Sarah, sorry, I never say GG too early because anything can happen, but um, he's going to go for another Calm Mind. I go for Swords Dance, and now I'm really fearing that he's actually HP Fire, uh, but he ends up going for Psy Shock, revealing that he's not HP Fire. Uh, he would have definitely gone for it there. He wouldn't have even hesitated. I had a Greninja in the back, so there was no reason to go for Psy Shock otherwise. So I'm just going to Swords Dance, and here, guys, I uh, might look a little bit um, of a douche play, but I go up to plus four because should he Moonlight on the turn that I go for U-turn. If I get the lowest roll possible, even at plus four, because I am not adamant, I only have 44 attack investment, I risked him setting up all the way, being able to take on my Greninja's Dark Pulse, and then knocking me out on the following, uh, on the following turn. Uh, and then Scizor had to come back in and set up all over again. So, even if he was only mono Psy Shock, I mean, it's not a big deal. I would have been able to take the hits even at plus six. They would have been doing like 30%. Uh, but I would have lost them on and lost differential in the process for no reason if he decided to go for the Moonlight. So, ultimately, going up to plus six was my best play as I am able to knock out this Cresselia from full at this range. Now, plus, uh, plus four um, was a roll. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was a roll in my favor. It does 96 to, I believe, one, uh, 115 or something like that. And um, But I couldn't, I, as I said before, I couldn't chance it. So we're able to take that game for Rob. Again, guys, check him out in the description down below. I uh, really hope you do because he's a great guy. He's a great friend. Uh, we, we had a call earlier. He wanted to discuss uh, potentially starting up a new channel. So I'm uh, in full support. For that, for Dom as well, Dom is thinking of doing that as well. If you guys haven't checked out Dom's game room, definitely check him out. Really cool guy too. But uh, yeah, that's it. We win our uh, week 
five match for the NPL. Uh, it's a league that I'm not even in, and it's the only one I got to win in this uh, this week, unfortunately. But um, glad I was able to pull it out for Rob. So uh, that's it, guys. That's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out on Twitter and on Facebook. Both are in the description down below. And leave me a comment if, uh, if you like this game and you just want to let me know. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Catch you later. Ciao.